Hi, this is John. Welcome to another video where we'll be talking about the SRX and clustering. A lot of people have uh, asked questions about how to cluster the SRX, not the clustering piece of it, but the practical day-to-day -day management of it. Uh, one of the things that you have to keep in mind with the SRX is it was designed for a data center type ISP environment. And one of the things that all ISP data center environments have in common is management is always out of band. So if you think about it in terms of a hosting provider, a data center, you have customers, each customer has their cage, and the cages might have ports going to your firewall to get to the internet, but you have a separate network that's separate from the customers that you use to access and manage all of your devices. So that being said, it causes problems in the enterprise where you tend to manage firewalls in band, at least on the internal interface. Uh, and here's a good example that I have up on the screen here. So you have your typical, you know, typical office that might buy a small SRX cluster, a branch cluster like an SRX 240 or 550 or 650 or something like that. You see it has a, a it's, it's already clustered. It has a, it's wreath one, which is its redundant interface to the outside, has a public IP. It has two cables going back to a small office core. You have your FXP0, which is your management interface, and you have your wreath zero, which is your production internal interface. And then you see off that core, we have a number of different VLANs. We have our management VLAN. We have our egress VLAN, which we use to route traffic out of the out of the company, out of the network. We have fi some finance users on a VLAN. We have some server farm on a VLAN. And we have IT desktops on its own VLAN as well. So I'm going to bring up the SRX, and let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's an SRX 210. It's clustered. And you can see it's up. I don't have the secondary plugged in because it's not necessary for this demo. So the SRX is clustered, and we're going to take a look at the apply groups. So typical of a clustered SRX, you have a, a group for node 0 and node 1. You'll see under node 0, I have my host name for the primary SRX. I have my backup router, uh, basically saying that when the device is is in the backup mode, the non-active state, it'll basically route all traffic through its FXP interface. Um, and then I have the IP on this FXP interface. Um, so you can see here that, you know, both of them are configured exactly. Don't mind the 192.168, that's just there for another demo I was doing, showing you can have multiple IPs on the same interface. But basically your 10.0.0 interfaces are your management interfaces. Now, if you look at the the routing table, you're going to see that create some problems for us. So you see our default route goes to the internet via wreath one. And then we have our management network. Um, we, we, well, let's take a step back. We have our, our static route to our internal network. So all of our networks are on the 10 slash eight network. And that goes back inside via the wreath zero. So 10.32, 10.200, 10.68, 10 10.70, they all point back inside to this uh, wreath zero interface. And then you have um, our 10.00 slash 24. That's directly connected on our FXP, which is our management interface. Then you have a couple other networks there. You have a static route, 10.32.0.220. That's a slash 32 route. That corresponds with this management workstation here, network engineer's workstation. Because of course, you don't want to manage this device in, in, in line. So what ends up happening is you create a slash 32 route through the management interface so that you can manage from your workstation. And then uh, we have, you know, our outside networks and some various things. One of the things that you'll notice if you look at the engineer's workstation is because we added a static route through the FXP interface, and this is the biggest problem people run into, um, and, and let's, let's take it a step further. Let's say besides this workstation, which I'm using for an example, um, you, you have uh, maybe some kind of monitoring servers or other things that are hitting the box. Well, what ends up happening is I send traffic to the SRX. It's going to respond back to me via this FXP interface. Now, what happens if I send traffic to the Internet? Let's say I want to get to Google. I'm going to send packets. They're going to go to my core. My core is going to route it to my firewall, and my firewall is going to route it to the Internet. Google on the Internet is going to get my traffic. It's going to send a response back. Now, here's where things get complicated. The SRX is going to say, okay, where is this workstation at? How do I get to it? Let's do a route lookup. And the route is going to go through this FXP interface. Now, one of the protections that SRXs have is that they, don't, they do not allow you to route 
revenue or production traffic through a management port. It's to keep management ports from being gateways into your production network and vice versa. So protect your management environment from the dangerous things that go through a production firewall or potentially dangerous things. So when it sees that in order to get to this workstation, my most specific route, which is a slash 32, is through this FXP interface, it's going to drop the traffic. Now this is just one example with a workstation, but in a real environment, you're probably going to have all your, all your network engineering team's workstations, possibly your security team's workstations, if they are going to manage the firewall. Um, you, you're probably going to have your, man, your, managing, your monitoring software, whether that's Solar Winds or Rancid to backup configs or uh, you know, Spectrum or whatever you're using to monitor your device via SNMP, that's going to be that that server that's monitoring the firewall is going to be black holed from getting past the firewall. So that's going to be a big issue. So let me show you on the firewall how I like to configure. Uh, all of my SRX clusters and it completely eliminates all the problems associated with this. Now you see this is a standard configuration that we have up here, a typical by the book SRX cluster. The first thing that I'm going to do is let's call this company Acme Company. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a virtual router. So you're going to set routing instances. Um, we're going to call it Acme and instance type is going to be so you have a bunch of types here. It's going to be virtual router. If I can type right, virtual router. And the interfaces that we're going to add is going to be wreath zero and wreath one. All right. Now that's pretty much all we have to do. We don't have to touch anything else. And I'm going to commit this. I'm going to commit this configuration. Now, it's important to keep in mind we don't have to touch the zones. What we do have to do, though, which I haven't done yet, is to move our static routes that we have configured into the virtual router. But I haven't done that for a very important reason. Let's take a look at the static routes. So here's our static routes, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do set top set routing instances, Acme routing options, static route, and we're going to add that zero slash zero, and we're going to point it to the same place. Okay. And we're also going to add the 10.0.0 slash 8 because that's all of our internal network has to get through there. And we're going to change the next top on this, of course. This is going to be 10.100.0254. And right? so now we've done that. So now we're going to delete our route. And we're going to delete our, our 10 dots as well. And we're going to delete our special management route that we created because we don't need all that. We're going to add a static route. And it's going to be a default route. And we're going to add it to 10.0.0.254, which is our management interface. So now our routing table looks like this, a lot different. And I'm going to show you how this basically eliminates pretty much all of your management nightmares that you would have to deal with um, in a small non-data center type network. And really it scales all the way up to data centers. Virtual routers are a powerful tool. We use them on everything. I can't think of an SRX or, or MX router that we don't have virtual routers on. It's just a great way to segment types of traffic, routes, tables, anything associated with that. It, it's it's, it's just an amazing tool. Once you start really grasping how powerful they are, it's hard to touch a system that doesn't have that capability. So let's get out of exit mode. Let's look at our routing table now. Well, it looks completely different. So right now, all traffic going to the SRX is going to be is going to reply via the management interface. Now this this is 
if you look at this routing table though on the on the main routing table which is inet0 if you look at the inet0 routing table all traffic is going to go out the management interface but you notice you don't see any direct the only directly connected networks are the management interface so anything hitting the management interface now will automatically reply via the management interface and that's a good thing because it keeps it separate from your production traffic now all of our production traffic is now in the acme virtual router so our default route still goes to the internet via wreath one and our internal routes the 10.0.0 slash 8 still goes to the internal via wreath zero and that's all we need now we don't need any other routes so it's simplified a routing table we don't need to have slash 32 management routes anymore and the traffic is completely separate so now you don't have to manage a bunch of routes you don't have to go back and constantly update them you have a default route pointing to your management network for everything and then on your internet side or your production side you keep all your production traffic in this one virtual router and this can even be expanded this is for a small company you could do the same thing if you were actually had if you have a multiple vrf uh, or multiple virtual router environment. If you had VRF light on your cores and you had a bunch of virtual routers on your cores or a bunch of VRFs, as Cisco calls them, and you, you might have 10 VRFs here, all your interfaces will be part of these VRFs. The only interface that will be part of INET0 are your FXP interfaces. That's it. Everything else gets moved. So your routing is clean, it's much easier to manage, and you don't have to worry about, about any you know unintended consequences. So now, so now if we go back to this image, if, I, if, if, if I'm sitting at this network engineer's workstation and I want to go to the internet, I'm going to route through the read zero out to the internet. When the traffic comes back, it's going to come back inside that virtual router, which only has these two interfaces. It's going to do a route lookup, see there's a read zero, and send the traffic right back. Now I'm fine. Now if 10 seconds later I want to log in to this device via SSH and check on some things, I'm going to SSH to the wreath zero. This is going to put me in the main routing table, and the FXP zero in the main routing table, separate from everything else. And when, when the SRX in that main table looks to reply, it's going to reply back to the FXP zero. And this basically fixes and eliminates all the problems that you have with the SRX and clustering, all the weirdness. And the only limitation to this configuration is prior to 11 uh, of the SRX, you couldn't terminate VPNs inside a virtual router. But I have plenty of SRXs running 12.1 uh, R44 or XR44 on the latest uh, SRX 550s, which can't run 11 code. They work fine with VPNs terminated into the Acme virtual router. And on 11.4 uh, and later on the earlier SRXs, you're fine as well. It's only pre-11 that you can't, that you do have that limitation. So nobody should be running pre-11 because 10 code was the first code that was barely stable so you know hopefully you've moved on to 11 and you're experiencing all the benefits of that and the 12.1 xr44 releases are dot 20 and dot 10 are very stable as well 12.1 is kind of a nightmare unless you're on the x release but their new paradigm is the x releases so this is my uh, recommendation and this basically eliminates most of the problems with uh clustering and management and all that sort of thing i hope you enjoyed it and uh hopefully i'll have some stuff for you next time